It is with great honor and humility that I stand before you today at this regional tradition leaders discussion on ending forest fires in Zambia. Forest fires endanger wildlife populations by destroying habitats, displacing animals and reducing food sources. Zambia boasts of a rich diversity of wildlife, including iconic species such as elephants, lions, leopards. Fires can disrupt migration routes, fragment habitats and increase the risk of human wildlife conflict. Feather threatening already vulnerable species. As you are aware, according to the Global Forest Watch in 2020 alone, wildfires ravaged over 10 million hectares of forest worldwide, from the Amazon rainforest to the Siberian wilderness to corner of our planet in human to the soul to the scourge of forest fires. The decision to convene this regional caucus brings together the wisdom, expertise, knowledge, passion of our tradition leaders. Forest experts, decision makers and advocates reflects our unwavering resolve to confront this challenge head on. It is a testament, it is a testament to our shared commitment to foster dialogue, collaboration and innovation in our pursuit of a more resilient and harmonious relationship with nature and its ecosystem. As a custodian of our national forests, it is our collective responsibility to address the pressing issues with urgency and determination. The rules and regulations outlined in the Forest Act number 4 of 2015 and the Environmental Protection and Protection Act under ZEMA and also Environmental Management Act provide solid foundation to our action. Today, we are here to co-create solutions to delve deep into the root cause of forest fires and develop concrete action for effective forest management. That's how this province has been. It has always had a canopy of trees like that. Nice tree line, healthy environment, perfect nature. Okay, so that we have. So at the end of the day, that's what we need to consider um, in the chip domes, maintaining. Okay, but we've got a problem. Doesn't take long before this happens. Now, you say, but it happens every year because we go through a dry season. Yes, we know. This is more than a dry season. This is a dry season through which fire, this is a forest in the dry season through which fire has gone. Who started the fire? Why? Whether it's just fire, but whether you are our, as our royal hand, as our chiefs, whether you are happy with that, whether you are, whether you are it not, we do not know. But that happens. It gets worse. Look at that. It gets worse. And this is not just a selection of some place here but this is generally what happens not just in this area here but as we believe across zambia what we just demonstrated here is now we have the capacity to be able to tell where early burning is being done late burning so we would like to have information like this about uh, northwestern which we can monitor over time and the Royal Highnesses can also be using it. Maybe we can also show the differences between areas that are under customary and the areas that are under state, so that we can see where a majority of this uh, lead burning is happening, and we can target those areas particularly for, uh, for capacity building. If you check this one and this one for 2022, you see that in 2023, we protected almost the National Park. There was no fire. And these other GMAs, it's open. That's showing that the community working together with the government, 
them feeling that yes, it is our responsibility and having blessings from all our traditional leadership, it gave us a best year. You see, 26. 26. If you go back, it was about 53. So meaning, we had the best year. We worked together implementing this uh, 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 program and the fire management plan which we had put in, uh, in place, working together with the fire committees and our traditional leadership, having blessings from them, and also helping us to sensitize the community. Today, you see everywhere there is fire, but where we are operating is no fire. Most of these things like uh, fires and cutting down of trees and what have you, we know in the past we had a very, very big role to play as traditional establishments until I think we, we began to see a downward trend from about 1965, 66, when most of the pieces of registration were removed from customary hands into the state, and in this case, the forestry department. From that moment, the enforcement kind of, which was removed from the traditional establishments, has suffered. So we need to kind of recreate the wheel and having meetings such as this one are great meetings because we all now need to come to the same table. There was some time with the government together with the forest giving what we were calling when I was young, Mankishi. They were giving to His Royal Highness to come and say now you can eat start bush burning. But this time, it's not there. So, people can burn the forest anyhow they feel like. Like they have said, hunting and the other, other things like preparing the fields. So, what we can, what we can ask for? Uh, if His Royal Highnesses, they are there, and they have seen the problem. Climate change is coming to our place. Uh, Northwestern was said it was the province which had a, a very thick forest, but this time it's gone. So His Royal Highnesses, please. I'm representing, I'm representing the uh, Royal Highness Chief Long. So His Royal Highnesses, with the, the forest department, please, uh, let's come to the aid and tell the people to educate the villagers. For this program to continue, it needs a big, big support. Uh, when Van Kamba Chief Mena started this program, I remember Van Kamba Karirele started toward the chief dome, go and tell the people concerning uh, bush burning. Now, for the chief himself to look some resources to start continue, it's not easy. So we are begging to you, if there is any assistance or any resources to help the chiefs, this program can continue. The source of the Kafue River sits in my chipido, at the tip, with the border DRC. This place has been invaded by people coming from a foreign country. You know that country. They are doing Cheko Beni. They are doing all sorts of work there. Now, my fear is that if this continues, the Kafue River may dry. The Kafue is the one that is feeding water on the Copper Belt, Southern Province, and other parts of the country. So what I have found it difficult is now uh, the Congolese people have started coming in because there is no one to protect that land. No one is going around to check on that land. I found beacons in the forest area, your area whereby they are giving plots for themselves. So I don't know how you are working. Is it just the name of forest people and not doing the work? We have a policy in Intambo. 
which says all the assets in Itambu belong to the chiefdom. Whether it is minerals, it is uh, the rivers, or the trees. Give an example. We have a power station in Itambu. We have power. Now, sorry, here in Zambia, you are getting 12 hours of uh, outages. In Itambu, we have 24 hours of power. <laughs> Brought about by a rare. We told the rare every asset in Tambo belongs to the people in Tambo. Let us partner. Let us have a say in, in our assets. This is what we are doing in Tambo. We, we are making sure that there is a, the life expectancy of our people goes up, the standard of living of our people goes up, so that people will now start appreciating what belongs to them. That way they will protect what belongs to them. We, have, we, we are going into carbon trade now with a company in, uh, in Kenya. Through, of course, uh, West Munga Reserve. Through Karumbira Mines. Because West Munga game project is being supported by Karumbira. A copper belt before the closure of the mines or before the mines were closed, copper belt had a beautiful forest. After 1990-94, when the mines started closing, copper belt by now is not the same, which means that the forest has gone. We have got people who have been given uh, timber licenses. When they go in the bush during August, September, October, they don't want to pass where there is no grass. They just burn anyhow. That's also a challenge which is facing in our chief dogs. We have got people who, whom they have given exploration licenses especially the Chinese and other miners. When they are doing their work in exploration work, they don't care about our bushes. They can just burn anyhow. Today, what we should be looking at also is populations. You look at the urban population, very urban population, that heavily rely on a charcoal. Then you do a demography of the people in the rural areas. Because those numbers, are, I think, are not too huge. That they cannot be contained in terms of uh, an alternative to the source of power. This is what we are missing. There's no education from the ministry or the, the forestry department into the chief domes. What we need is the forestry department to come into the chief domes, have community meetings with our people. Because at the moment, I can tell you, people don't care, they just burn. So they lack that education. We've learned a lot of things from here. Why is First Quantum supporting this initiative? It's a question that I wish to share with everyone. Why is a private company, a mining company, supporting this initiative? Perhaps it's a question that we may have as people coming from different areas. We have a commitment as First Quantum that comes from the top leadership that we shall work with communities, we shall support communities where we have business interests. And that support shall leave behind a legacy that we can point back beyond the mine life. So it's a policy commitment from the top chief executive and also the board. And 
it's the basis on which we support all these initiatives in all the operations, not only in Zambia, we are doing the same in all the countries where we have business interests. The Forest Act basically hinges more on forest management, protection and also conservation. But there is a misunderstanding where they think that this only applies to the gazetted forest, but it applies everywhere. But in terms of benefits, much of the benefits are close to government. Hence the change of the Forest Policy and the Forest Act to support communities to select an area which they can manage and the government will ensure that they are given the rights and responsibility to manage those areas. Then the benefits accrues to the community. Even the issues of forest management, forest management and also fire management we are talking about here, it can be done whereby communities have their own area where they can also come up with the fire management plans, they can come up with the forest management plans, they can also come up with their constitution to govern themselves, how to control those areas. To our Royal Highnesses, I would say, a road without obstacles leads nowhere. As you lead your people, there are always be obstacles. And we must be proactive. We shouldn't expect people to come to us and give us what we deserve. No, we must take the lead ourselves as leaders. That's why we are leaders in our chapter. We should take lead. When we come short, that's when now we ask for external help. As we break off, we go back to our stations of operations. We should remember the conversations in this room. What can we do to effectively uh, champion forest fires. We have seen that uh, conservation can be actually beautiful and we are thank you. The Center for Environment Justice, we have been running what we call the Environmental Protection Dialogue annually every October. This platform was launched in 2020 October with the aim of co-creating solutions to our environmental challenges that we are facing as a nation. It is also an environmental accountability space which brings together all the key strategic stakeholders, government line ministries, the private sector, the academia, the youth, the women, the traditional leaders, it brings almost everybody that you can think of. We call it a dialogue, not a conference. Uh, somebody asked me, why do we call it a dialogue and not a conference? Because as CEJ, we believe that it is only in a dialogue where we can co-create solutions, no matter how tense the, the topic we are talking about, whether I like you, you don't like me, we will sit on one table with the aim of agreeing that here there is an environmental challenge and let's find solutions. And last year was very interesting that at the side event for the traditional leaders caucus, the topic of forest fires was of concern to the chiefs. And we are so happy that FQM agreed that they support the Northwestern engagement. And we are hoping that uh, in the next few months, we'll be able to go to, to, to Luapla province, Northern province, Muchinga province and Southern, because issues of forest fires are happening countrywide. And two weeks ago, we heard when the president emphasized on this matter, equally, the means of green economy and environment. So this is a very important topic that I'm hoping that as we leave this place, we'll be able to share the information in our chief domes with our communities, our colleagues. <music>